Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember, and this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 17, The End in Friend. So this episode's kind of like the one where Starlight helps Luna and Celestia get along. Because for a second I thought she was going to pull that spell out of her hat again. I was actually thinking of something more along the lines of Freaky Friday. Similar concept. Except literally in each other's bodies. But I like how she solved it by showing them that their interests, even though different, still work together. They have some overlap and there are interesting things to each of them about the other's interests. And I see a bunch of fan fiction being generated by this episode. Oh yeah. Figuratively, we haven't gone and looked. Yeah, no, I haven't been on fan fiction in, like forever. There was this one time during season four where I just, I realized it was there and I spent several months reading fan fiction. And that's how I developed a taste for Octavia and Vinyl Scratch. <laughs> Fine school days. That's good. Read that one. Now back to the actual episode. <laughs> first i didn't know where they were going for it until we got to that moment where starlight was trying to talk them through the whole relationship thing like i know we're gonna have them break up but how are we gonna get them back together well to quote reboot yes i am capable of doing that fights are best mended through apology or tragedy oof Though that reminds me of a line from Speed. Yeah, I was making sure it was in the first Speed and not the second Speed movie. Where uh, relationships forged through um, traumatic situations aren't good. They haven't seen that to last long. Which they actually use as an excuse in the second movie of why Keanu Reeves wasn't in it. <laughs> Though I hear he might be reprising his role as... I can't remember if it was Bill or Ted. Well, he's going to be, apparently there's going to be a new movie, Bill and Ted. I don't know if it's going to be Awesome Adventure, New Venture. Don't know what the title is, but apparently that's happening. Also, I still need to watch John Wick, because that's supposed to be a really good set of movies with him in it. But the beginning of the episode, like, I knew it was them showing that our interests don't match, really. I'm like, well, yeah, that's obvious. The problem was the fact that Twilight went, yeah, I'm going to use this as a... Lesson for my students. And they were unable to explain why they were friends, and as they were under the spotlight of having to explain their friendship to the students. It's kind of like this rule in science where you can't observe anything without having an effect on the circumstances. Go back to the episode where Twilight was trying to figure out how Discord and the other members of the main six all had a great time. And mm. they were trying to exactly recreate the circumstances. And they point out that that's not possible because Twilight's observing. Kind of a funky thing in quantum physics, too. If you look at a quantum particle, you affect it. I guess this goes back to the one study where people were watching pachinko machines. Those are the ones with the little silver balls, right? Yes, very fun. Never played one. I'm sorry. Well, they were watching these particular pachinko machines that were designed to just keep dropping balls. And they were told to think about the direction they wanted the balls to fall. And in other rooms, they were told not to look at the board, but to think about it. And then there were other rooms where the pachinko machines were just running by themselves. And they had cameras on them with no one watching them. And then they went back and looked at the footage from all of this. And they found out in the rooms where humans were present and thinking about the pachinko balls, the pattern of how they were falling changed. It wasn't by much, but it was enough that they could measure it. So yeah, observation. I'm sorry I keep changing off topics. I, I remember interesting things as we go along. Well, it was also pointed out in an episode of Phineas and Ferb where the thing that they do that day is they create something and sit there and watch it just to try and figure out what happens and where the projects go because they never get caught. And at the very end of the episode, one of the brothers points out that the act of observation alters the experiment. This is why it's really hard to measure certain things in science the act of measuring it <laughs> and of course this was an interesting pair to pick for this because people would say you couldn't get much more opposite than the fashionista and the sports enthusiast 
And then you go back to the classic episode with Rarity and Applejack, which is what I was thinking about through most of this episode as well. I was like, oh, why didn't Twilight just get Applejack for this? Because she already observed both of them working through this. But of course, we had to have a conflict in this episode. So new pair. Also, it was the fact that they had scheduled time to spend together. So that's why they were initially pulled in. Though pulling Applejack to assist with the fix might have been good, but then you're upsetting the balance of Starlight's importance in her role of guidance counselor. Also, I can't believe that when they were doing those cuts back and forth between Rainbow Dash and Rarity, both whining about each other, I'd use stronger language, but we have a rating to preserve, that they were doing it in front of each other. I had a feeling that they were doing it in front of each other, I just didn't realize it was on the same couch. That's why I thought it might not be in front of each other, because I'm like, you guys are both on the same couch. Are you seriously kvetching about each other in front of each other while sitting next to each other on the same couch? There was a lot of glitter on Rarity's shoes. It never stopped. Is there a spell on that thing where it generates glitter? Because if that's not deliberate... That's a design flaw because it's making a mess. And if it's not infinite, you eventually run out of glitter and your shoes no longer look like what you purchased them as. I was thinking the entire time, I was like, so either this has a spell on it or Rarity is going to run out of glitter on her shoes by the end of the episode. I kept waiting for her to chuck those shoes because she was having so much trouble walking long distances in them. And of course, that nice little play on words, these boots aren't made for trotting. Going to the song, these boots are made for walking. But she also referred to the fact that like, it was advertised that they were. But the specific phrasing ties back to the song. Also, second episode to really hammer home uh, Rarity's reading choices. Because her decision on the disguises was based on her noir novel reading. Though when you look at what she pulled off in this episode... And what she pulled off when she cleared Rainbow Dash's name and compare that to her disguises in Friendship University. Is this the same pony? Because the other two showed a strong amount of deductive reasoning and thinking and follow through. And Rainbow Dash was there while Rarity was clearing her name. So... She should be less surprised that Rarity's looking at clues and following. And Rarity saw the prints of the creature that they ran into. Well, Rainbow Dash was only focused on following the trail. Because very easily there could have been an accomplice and their paths could have diverged. So I thought maybe at that point they were going to split up. Also, how is it any safer to boat across that water than it is to fly? I'm thinking that the boat acts as a shield, so when they do run over one of those bursts, it actually doesn't do anything to the boat, so you're safer on it because of that. Also, maybe they can navigate around it easier that way? Rainbow Dash is the fastest pony, apparently, in ever, so... That reminds me, a little overboard with the basic sonic rain boom of hitting the ball, that... Even if Rarity would have had the basket, the basket wouldn't have lived. And I don't know if that counts as points if the ball's still not residing in the basket. That is a question depending on buckball rules because baskets like that bounce. So if you catch the ball and it bounces out, does it still count? Because those are very similar to the baskets that you see at carnival games that are pretty much designed that your ball's going to bounce right out because only keeping the ball in the basket counts in those games. Though I gotta say the beginning, the build up of them like, okay, we got this stuff planned, we're gonna go and have fun. And then it's a little bit stressed, a little bit more stress, and then and then we get to the point where, oh, it looks like it's gonna relieve stress, and then what's up with those gems? Are they glass? Real gems don't break like that. Well, real gems also don't look like that when you harvest them. They're usually like rough stones that you are like, this is this is diamond. Yeah. Wait until I cut it. And then you scrape away the encrustation, and then you have a gem, and then you look for inclusions, and then you cut it, and you finally end up with something that looks like what Rarity's able to just pick up off the walls and put in her cart. 
Because real gems don't look like what we perceive as gems. No, that's what happens after humans get their hands on them and make modifications. And wow, yes, I know we wanted Rara to be upset about the gems, but if the gems all shattered because Rainbow Dash crashed into the cart, shouldn't you be just a teensy bit concerned that Rainbow Dash might be hurt? Yeah, I would also like go Rarity. Those gems were worthless with how easily they shattered. Because they, they fell out of a cart. At most, they'd probably get scratched. That I can also understand, though, because that would ruin the product. But they're gym. They shouldn't have... Shattered like that. And okay, if they ended up scratched, then you can very nicely give them to Spike. Because I'm sure they still taste good. And you could pick other gems. There's a whole cavern full. It's not like it was already on your piece of clothing and then got ruined because then your entire product is ruined. Though it was a good launching point for I hate you, no I hate you more. <laughs> and of course they had to match the name of the episode. Though really, it, they didn't really actually end the friendship. They started to, but things kept interrupting that. And I have a feeling they would both enjoy each other's books if they actually gave it a chance, but they didn't. They either read the first chapter or they only read the first couple of pages. Mm-hmm. Because they both complained about the writing style, but it turned out that neither of them read the books in their entirety. So, because at first it sounded like Rarity read more than Rainbow Dash because she was at least able to reference several characters with unpronounceable names and also the over-the-top, in her opinion, action sequences and how long they drag out. You have to get a few pages in to know stuff like that. Yeah, I'm thinking Rarity, based on how she is, read a chapter. I think Rainbow Dash got like three pages in and literally fell asleep. Because mysteries can be like that because the subtleties, like... There is communication that can be done through flowers. Different flowers have different meanings. So an entire conversation could be carried out in flowers. Clues could be left in flowers. But if you have absolutely no interest in flowers, that is going to be incredibly boring. Though speaking of writing in flowers as a clue, you could actually use it subtly to indicate that two characters are actually in a romantic relationship they're trying to hide. But one gives the other certain flowers that indicates a romance over just a friendship. The obvious one is roses. Anyone could spot that, but there's other flowers that also indicate a romance. But there's other things like dahlias meaning danger, if I'm recalling correctly. Because, you know, roses, as we know, modern roses, which is not what roses look like. That's only what modern roses from the past few hundred years look like. Look up Banksia roses sometimes. You won't think that's a rose. This is all fascinating stuff. Just the things we think of as we talk about the episode. You can also tell that we thought the episode was okay and good and everything. We just weren't that invested in it. It just made us think about all this other stuff. Well, the thing is, we both enjoy reading, but we don't necessarily... Well, I think you can tell we enjoy reading considering we have an entire section of the channel devoted to reading children's books. But, you know, we do enjoy books for our own age group as well, but we don't necessarily read the same books. I'm kind of a sci-fi person, though I do like a good romance. And I'm not thinking about romance novels. I'm thinking about a good romance in a story. And I got a bit burned out on traditional fantasy because I read enough of it that I could recognize all the tropes. So when it gets to the point where you read five pages of the book and you can predict 90% of the story... So different styles of books. I'm pretty sure I'd enjoy some of the stuff Ember has read. I just never was introduced to it. I'm kind of like, if I like the story, I like the story. It's kind of like the reason I don't like a lot of rap. There's certain raps I like. I'm like, well, that's cool. I even had friends who like listened to a lot of rap and stuff like that. And I was perfectly fine with that. It's their stuff. Cool. Another example of people who like different things getting along. A lot of my friends were way more athletic than I was. And I still hung out with them. Maybe because I liked watching them be athletic. Like, whoa, I can't do that. That's so cool. Like one of my friends could throw a rock. He was like Crocodile Dundee, how accurate he was. It was scary. Wow, rock throwing. I lived in the middle of nowhere. I know, but I'm like, almost anywhere else that sounds like a very bad thing. 
but you guys were out in the middle of the forest. At worst, you startled a ground squirrel or something. He usually hit cans. There was this one time, though, that somehow something of mine got tangled up in some wires, and we just spent all day throwing stuff at it to get it down. He was the only one who could get it down because he consistently hit it enough times that it eventually unwrapped itself from what it was around. And I would like to know how long it takes before the, the gem trail goes away mm. on that amulet. And also, clever, quick info dump to tell us what that amulet does. And the fact that Twilight's keeping objects for Celestia. Not just one, a lot of them. Where were you three episodes ago? I didn't realize they were being kept for Celestia at that time. Celestia sent them. Oh. They say that very clearly regarding the items for the scavenger hunt. Ah, I am Rainbow Dash. You're Rarity. Though I'm nowhere near as athletic as Rainbow Dash. Holy smokes, man. Not even close. I think you are more physically fit, but I think I'm more athletic. Very. Let's see. Anything else we want to go over or anything in particular? You're like, I'm going to nitpick that right there. I understand not being able to decide between the boots and the stilettos beyond the fact that I'm with Rainbow Dash. Stilettos, seriously? Heels, seriously. Yeah, but stilettos especially because you have like this much of a point. They're actually really awesome if you want to stomp down on somebody's foot because it concentrates all the weight. Oh, yeah. But for overall walking, no. But that option was not shown in the store. You have boots that convert into stilettos. Also, the stiletto is a different color than the boot. Why would she have bought something that clashy? So how is the release mechanism? Because she got her boot back. Also, shoe as a lockpick. Really? That's a really big lock. Next thing, we're going to have the shoe phone. <laughs> uh, maybe not in that universe, but hey, magic. Oh, we had a banana phone. Hmm. The way you said that made me think, can Spike still send messages? Good question. Because we haven't seen that for a while. Well, I don't think there's been as much cause for Twilight and Celestia to communicate like that. It doesn't seem to be a regular type dragon thing. It seems to be more unique to Spike. So is it an ability he lost when he went through the metamorphosis and became more adult? Hmm. Or have they just not had a use for that particular thing in the story, right? Probably haven't had a use for it, because if you think about everyone's abilities, do you really need Spike to set a message on fire to send it somewhere? Because unicorn magic, just a quick teleport, paper doesn't weigh much. Oh, I just thought of a scenario where they could actually write a scene in such a way that basically magic is blocked, but somehow Spike sending a message still works. So they have no magic, but we have a pen and we have this piece of parchment. What can we do? Who has the best uh, mouth writing? Wow, it suddenly became an episode of Ghost Rider. Hmm. PBS show that one of the kids who could see Ghost Rider was trapped with a kid who couldn't, and he didn't have his pen. He had to write the message in pebbles. Hmm. And I believe I've never seen that show where I don't remember it. So do you think we're getting close to wrapping things up? Probably, because we keep sidetracking away from the episode. That's not a good sign in a podcast that's supposed to be about an episode. I'm not sure how I feel, though, about the griffin and the dragon being the one to constantly chime in. So why are you guys even friends? Though it kind of makes sense because of the way they, the nebulous they, have overall portrayed dragons and griffins as basically having zero friendship ever. I mean, the hippogriffs seem to be very friendly, and the changelings, once they went through their change, seem to be pretty friendly. Yaks are friendly but insular, but apparently griffins and dragons aren't allowed to be friendly. Apparently. It's just so shallow. Is it? You can kind of see that, you know, back when these other species were introduced, they didn't have the idea that they were going to bring them back a whole lot. So you see a lot of penciling in of, okay, we got to fix this. Hmm. Can see that. It's this trick writers like to call retconning. Remember, kids, if it's a story 
it's not canon that the public sees it. So that means you can go back and fix things. But once it's out in the public, you have to do the band-aid method of, oh shoot, I want the story to go this direction. The problem is this character specifically said I can't go that direction. But what if... I throw this magical MacGuffin into the mix, and all of a sudden, I can do what I want. That's what a lot of writers run into. Or they go, oh, this character actually would actually work so much better this way. Okay, they need to have a sudden change of heart. Or you just write them differently in that book. And when people ask what's the difference, you're like, I like them better this way. Yes, yes. I've actually had a chance to ask an author that. You're the author. You know that you changed what happened between book one and book three. You describe the same scenes in two different ways. And not just, oh, okay, two different characters' point of view. No, different things happened. Really cool moment. Mm-hmm. A really nice author, too. Yes. And I, I did like how you bring up the point of, like, those two. Like, oh, yeah, it is just those two are really questioning it. The only other question by one of the other student six was the hippogriff going, uh, at the beginning of the episode, started the whole thing of, you two are friends? Because basically she asked, so what are you guys going to do now? And the problem started when they gave different answers. So she was the catalyst and the other two are like egging the whole thing on. Anything else to go over? I think that'll about do it. Okay, then. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 8. Episode 17, The End in Friend. I didn't make you wait this time. <laughs> so, hey, welcome to the outro. Once again, we still have lots of videos. If you like this one, please click the like button before you leave. Subscribe. There's a bell to ring. There, there's a place for comments. We have lots of other videos. And then once you're ready to leave YouTube, you can find more of Lux's art throughout the internet. We have links. And there are options for finances as well. You know, everyone and their dog has a Patreon and or a coffee. So yeah, we have both of those. Patreon starts out at a dollar. The limit is the maximum of your bank account. Please make sure you leave enough for food and rent. <laughs> One dollar gets you commenting and voting rights and a monthly sketch. Higher up, higher rewards, obviously. Coffee, one time, increments of three. There are other ways to get us money without giving it to us directly. A lot of times we put uh, some product placements links in there. If you click those and buy, we get a kickback. Kind of like the Ebates link that I plugged over on Ember's Reading Room. Only it tends to tie back to specific products where Ebates just ties back to a service. Also, commissions. So if you want to spend money and get something that's not mass market produced, you can ask Lux to draw something. I, I mean, you just saw him draw something here. He does a pretty good job. I mean, just go look through his DeviantArt catalog. I mean, look at that. That is one heck of a portfolio. And, oh, yeah, I, I jumped into the Tumblr game. Uh, stole a corner of Lux's Tumblr because I'm all about legitimate shortcuts. So there I'm posting money saving, general hacks, info, referrals. I mean, there's a way to hack the Starbucks menu on there to get your cinnamon dulce latte for a lot less than what they want to charge you if you just order a cinnamon dulce latte. And then, you know, there's stuff about internet, net neutrality, ways to get more books, and more to come. I'm trying not to go overboard because, you know, real life, for right now, I'm managing to post, and I mean, have Lux post, <laughs> uh, one tip, tricks, referral, etc. a week. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.